So uh, I don't, you guys probably already know this, but there's a Medicare for All march across the country in various different cities with various different speakers, performers, so on and so forth, happening on July 24th. Um, I was going to go to the Columbus one, but I have a prior engagement, or else I would. Um, I, I, I was, you know, if if I didn't have this prior engagement that I made a commitment to, um, I, I totally fucking would go. But Jesse Jett, if you're in Columbus, Jesse Jett's going to be there. I think the LA one has Tara Reid. Uh, yeah, there's like a bunch of people doing performances, speeches, so on and so forth. But this is being put together by activists, by organizers. Uh, Savage Joy is is a is a lead organizer. Uh, and again, you know, I, I I will say this because I know people have problems with other commentators and so on and so forth. Uh, who gives a fuck? Who gives a fuck? Who gives a fuck? Who gives a fuck if you're like, I don't like this one personality? Who gives a fuck? Do you care about uh, healthcare being a human right? Then fucking go support this thing. This is not about egos. This is not about name credits. This is not about any of that. This is about getting people healthcare. This is about making sure that people are not in medical debt. This is this is about making sure that if you are if you get sick without you, you know, period, whether it was your fault or not, that you're taken care of and not punished for it financially. Remember how I said we found different ways to implement slavery? De de debt peonage is, is one of them. Being in medical debt is essentially a form of slavery. You're paying somebody because you got sick. How fucked up is that? Now, public support for Medicare for All, again, this is not a shocking statement I'm about to make. But public support for Medicare for All has skyrocketed, fucking skyrocketed in the last five years, just in the last five years. Uh, this is not a new debate that's happening in this country. Nancy Pelosi, of all people, was advocating for Medicare for All until she became a corporate whore with two refrigerators full of ice cream that she eats in front of uh, hungry, hungry children uh, and says that they should be satisfied uh, that she is happy. Before she became that kind of a demon, um, she was advocating for Medicare for all, for universal health care in America. JFK was talking about it. JFK was talking about it. This issue has been in the in the in the precipice of ma mainstream conversation, political discourse. For the better part of four or five decades. And the popularity fucking sky every time you go, every time somebody makes an argument, right? Even conservatives now have to have to admit that Medicare for all would be a good idea. Oh, where are we gonna get the money from? Where are we gonna get your money? Maybe fucking cut the Pentagon budget. Maybe you don't need that much fucking money. Maybe cut how about defund the police across the across the country and allocate some of that money into providing health care for your citizens. Oh, I don't know. Tax the fucking rich. I just came up with three ideas and I'm a fucking comedian screaming into a microphone in my bedroom. I'm wearing a band shirt that I didn't buy because the band is a friend of mine and felt bad and fucking gifted me the shirt. I figured I gave up with three solutions that you can implement tomorrow. And give everybody health care by Friday. I'm not that smart. I chose stand-up comedy as my full-time career. I figured out three solutions. And you're telling me Congress can't in 50 years. I think if anything proved as to how popular Force the Vote actually is, or, sorry, how popular Medicare for All is, it's forced to vote. I gave away the, the thing. Uh, but hashtag forced to vote. When that happened earlier this year, it really outed a whole lot of people. And it really showed you who is, who, who truly believes in Medicare for All and universal health care. And who just did it because, you know, that seemed like the, the right thing to say. 
And we're just going along with it because, you know, that was popular opinion. Their politicians were saying Medicare for all, Medicare for all, Medicare for all. The second AOC said, I don't know if it's the right strategy, you know, whatever. The excuses she fucking made to not force the vote. And then the people that were like, you know, it's a strategy, tools, synergy. Okay, I think I've made my point. Those people are the people that don't have fucking belief systems. They're all just celebrity politician whores. That's all they are. They they don't have any opinions of them, their own. They just parrot some shit that AOC might have said or fucking Rashida Tlaib said. And that's how they make their opinions and that's how they live their lives. No, have if have a fucking thought. Build build a belief system for fuck's sake. And most people were saying, hey, we kind of fucking need this. Pramila Jayapal came out. Now, Pramila Jayapal is, is one of the authors of, of the Medicare for All bill uh, that Joe Biden said he would veto if it ever came to his desk. And we'll get to the reason why. Uh, Pramila Jayapal claims that it's no longer a matter of financial, you know, uh, difficulties or whatever the how to pay for an argument is is isn't really working anymore and uh as she says it's about political will it's about political will okay then why weren't you for forced to vote why weren't you and the other 115 members of uh the house that are pro medicare for all why don't you guys fucking vote for it what the fuck You're going to blame political will, but you're also going to show that you don't have the political will to get your flagship issue off the ground to actually help hundreds and millions of Americans. Where's your fucking political will? You're going to lecture people about political will, but you have fucking none? Again, Biden said he'd fucking veto it. He'd veto the bill if it ever got to his desk. That's what he said. And of course he would. I mean, he pumps more money into Cobra. He's he's doing something to pump up Cobra. He's been trying to cut social services in America forever. The Democrats get paid more by the insurance companies, big pharma and hospitals than Republicans do. Democrats... It got $287 million, while Republicans only got $165 million. I mean, they're both, th th I mean, this is kind of what corporations do. They they put money into both sides so that no matter who wins, they win. That's why the elections in this country are, are shams and meaningless. I think this is an Emma Goldman quote that said, if voting really mattered, they'd make it illegal. That's how you know that weed is so powerful. Because they made it illegal. And they continue to keep it that way on a federal level. So if Democrats got $287 million from uh, insurance companies, big pharma, and hospitals, and Republicans only got $165 million, who's got more to lose? That's why the Democrats have never really been for. I mean, the DNC even said it, it, this will never be a part of their platform. It's because there's more money in it. In fact, these three industries gave Biden two times the amount of money that they gave Trump. Because they know. They know that the Democrats' enemy isn't fucking Republicans. It's progressives. It's socialists. It's communists. And I'm not using those words as an insult. I'm using those words as, uh, as, as positives. It's good to be a socialist. It's good to be a communist because it shows that you care about people and you want something better. You're trying to better this world, whereas being a capitalist is all about you and making the most amount of money and fucking over as many people in order to do that. That's what Joe Biden represents. It's what the Democrats represent. That's definitely what the Republicans represent. So another solution is is um, uh, 
state by state. You know, California, they're, they're claiming, oh, Gavin Newsom's the guy, which he's not. Uh, New York State is, is trying to push Medicare for all to be legalized, um, which is, you know, that's a strategy, sure. But in reality, it'll wind up the same way as weed. It'll be state by state. Uh, moving is going to be a fucking nightmare. And if you're covered in Pennsylvania, you're not covered in Ohio. So if you travel, as I do, uh, I go to Ohio, I get hurt. My insurance isn't, I, they can't accept my insurance. So now I'm stacked with a medical bill from an Ohio hospital. Same thing with weed. If you cross state lines and you go into a state that doesn't have medical or recreation or decrimmed, you know, now you got to face penalties, even though you in your state might be a, a medical cannabis patient. Or it might be legal recreationally. But let's say you're visiting Wyoming. It's not legal there. You might get put into a federal prison for that. See the problem? See the complexities of doing it state by state? Something this big, something this large? That should just be a right that's granted to everybody? I mean, weed should be legalized at this point. But again, President Crime Bill ain't going to fucking do that. That's why weed's still federally illegal, because it's actually fucking helpful. You want to know what helped me through my anxiety and the deep depression I was in over the winter? And the fact that, like, I can actually have some downtime to myself without having this, this little panic in the back of my... It's weed. I can smoke a little bit of cannabis here and there. And relax. And not have this nag na nagging little voice in the back of my head. I don't have to worry about feeling guilty over taking some time off. And enjoying my life. The real question is, how do the Panthers do it? The Black Panthers implemented Medicare for all in their own communities. And it worked. People were getting health care. People were going to the doctor, getting checkups, getting their medications. Well, it's because they partnered with local doctors, clinics, and pharmaceutical far, far, uh, uh, neighborhood pharmacies to help people. And they did. And they said, look, we'll take a percentage of patients. So in my opinion, what Medicare for All activists should do is to look at that history. That's why history is so important, because the answers might already be there. So go see how they implemented that. They organized something that was really beneficial. The research for sickle cell happened through that. How did they implement Medicare for All in their communities? Let's start with that. Get some doctors on board. I had a med student once, Johnson City, Tennessee, maybe four years ago, five years ago at this point. We were talking about Medicare for All. And he said, I'm actually against it. And I go, well, that's interesting. Why? And he said, well, I'm in med school. And it's costing me a lot of money. If it's government-run health care, the amount that I would get paid to be a, a resident or a doctor or what have you, even the lowest position would be cut. So I, I, you know, let's, let's just throw a number out there. Let's say the starting salary is a hundred K. Um, I'm probably going to get down to 60. A 60 is very respectable. In my opinion, $60,000 a year. Dude, if I make $60,000 a year, I'd be solid. I would be worried about my car payments. You know what I mean? And I looked at him and I said, well, don't you think that that just speaks more to reforming the education system so that it's more affordable? So that it's it might also be state run like they do in Germany. 
don't you think that we should cancel student debt? And then his response to that was, well, I'm not an expert in that. Well, it doesn't matter. All that shows is that this issue is intersectional. So if you're a doctor and you're like, oh, but my pay, my pay will get cut. Okay. Again, that's the capitalist way of thinking. Oh, my pay is going to get cut. You're still going to make a pretty fucking good living. And now the only difference is somebody else gets to make a pretty fucking good living too. If you're against Medicare for all, it's it's really a, a self-centered argument. The Panthers didn't do this because they they were trying to gain glory for themselves. No, they wanted to help their communities. They looked at poor black people and poor white people, and they said, you guys deserve to go to the doctor just as much as anybody in an ivory tower. That's what this fight's about. Get into your comments. Fred, it's good to see you. Thank you for uh, thank you for hanging out, Fred. And Zozovix, thank you for your tip. That's very kind of you. Um, Clement Rebel says it has to be some form of single payer to shift the incentive from sick care for profit to health care. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I think that's, you know, that's, that's one of the things you, 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 you brought up a, an, an interesting conundrum, I guess, is so people use different terms. I think they all mean the same thing, but perhaps I'm wrong. But, and if you have some insight on this, please do leave it in the comments. Uh, but, you know, people say single payer health care, universal health care, Medicare for all. The, I, to me, it seems like they're all kind of the same thing. Um, maybe I'm wrong. Uh, I, I don't know. Uh, Zuzovic says politicians need a political will because they're the walking dead. <laughs> uh, yeah, I guess so. I guess so. Uh, single payer increase the quality of, wait, I lost the comment. Whoops. Uh, single payer increase the quality of care because it's far more efficient. And and the Holly's pointing out Truman was also talking about health care, Medicare for all. Um, and Clement Rebel goes on to say, I think the reason they won't give it to us is because they know it won't go away like other countries. Well, of course, I think that was the major reason why they didn't uh, implement something like that during the pandemic. And he had he had a reason. I think somebody pointed it out. Yeah, Holly pointed it out. Social Security Act 1884A is is the emergency health care um act and we were under a global pandemic and that would have counted and biden could have implemented that in a snap but he didn't even during the even during him trying to get the vaccines out you could have fucking put it out there you know how many people would have gone to the doctor just to get checked up just to make sure nothing was going on with them the, the, he you know more lives could have been probably saved He, he he had a way to do that and and climate rebel is a hundred percent right if they they implemented something like that there's no fucking way it would go away and if we and if they took it away there you know we would see another mass movement like BLM for healthcare oh climate rebel says uh Medicare seniors get is far from single payer we we pay a third out of pocket huh that's fucked up that's really really fucked up i did not know that that's crazy see again all those things to me is is just like why why are you making old people pay a third out of their pocket they're on a fixed income it just doesn't make any sense this this model of healthcare has has never made any fucking sense to me. I'll tell you guys this story and and we'll we'll wrap up the stream. The first winter I came here, I'd never seen snow. 
And my sister and I were super pumped. So my dad basically like gave us some buckets to go shovel his car out with buckets. And we didn't have like winter jackets or nothing. Right. So we put on our coats, our, our, our hoodies. I think we had a sweater. Uh, we ran out, we played in the snow. And the next day I got sick. I had like 105 fever. I was fucking delusional. And I was eight, maybe nine. And my mom panicked. We went to the doctor and I'm clearly delusional and fucking seeing shit and like sweating out of my ass. Like it's, it was nuts. Um, and the, and instead of being like, Hey, this is an emergency. Now here, here's the thing. A lot of people are like, why didn't, why didn't she take you to the emergency room? We, we didn't, we didn't know. We'd been in this country maybe four or five months. That wasn't in our heads. So we went to see our doctor. And the first thing she goes is, you have to fill out this paperwork before the doctor can see you. My mom was like, what? My, my fucking kid might die. Eventually, the, the, the doctor showed up and looked at me and was like, yo, what's this kid doing in the fucking waiting room? Gets me back there, checks my temperature, does some, you know, cools me down, gives me some medicine. We go get it. I like sleep for 14, 15 hours, pass out. It took me a couple days to recover, but I was like delusional. And my mom still like will bring that up every once in a while because it's like she could see that I was fucked up and like uh, hallucinating out of my gourd. And they were like, paperwork? And people want to sit there and claim that capitalism is the greatest system in the world. I, uh, th I could have died in the fucking waiting room because my mom hadn't filled out the right paperwork. So you're just paperwork over saving somebody's life. What's what is the point of you being a, a fucking doctor if that's the case, or or working in a doctor's office? A cynical girl points out health scare, and that's what it is. Oh, you better have your health insurance. Even if you do, you're going to end up being in debt. But the Democrats are done with it. I mean, the, if if Pramila Jayapal wants to show her fucking support for, you know, the flagship issue that she has been running on, then she should go join those protests. She should be advocating for force to vote. Where the fuck is her political will? Fred Fred's asking a question. So we shouldn't be organized. We, we shouldn't be organizing because cannabis legalization is complicated. <laughs> That's not what I said. Uh, I think we should be organizing with cannabis legalization should be federally legalized. Like it should just be legal uh, instead of it being state by state. I think state by state, um, state by state gets more complicated than it needs to be. Like full legalization is what I'm talking about. Uh, yeah. Sorry for not clarifying that completely. Uh, yeah. And, and like Holly says, docs would rather see patients than do the paperwork. So, yeah, exactly. Especially if it's, you know, don't, the paperwork is secondary. I get that it needs to be done. But when when you have a sick kid in your fucking office, get them to the doctor. Get them to the doctor. Uh, cool. I hope I cleared that up for you, Fred. Uh, is, yeah, I'm talking about full legalization on a federal level, on a national level, state by state gets complicated, uh, and, and we should be organizing, um, to make, to make it less complicated, to make it easier for people to live their lives. Yeah. Thank you guys so much for tuning into this video. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure you hit the like button and please make sure you share this content out. Sharing is very important. Sharing is how independent media gets the word out there about topics that corporate media doesn't even want to mention on their networks. So it's really up to you guys. Corporate media very much depends on the people. We are people powered media. That's what we really are. Uh, another great way to help if you're on stable financial ground is to uh, make a financial contribution to this channel. 
And you can do so over at krishmohanhaha.com slash donate. You can become a sustaining member, which gets you free tickets, early access to videos, bonus stand-up comedy and storytelling content, uh, a way for you to communicate directly with me, ask me questions, and other uh, premium content that uh, will be released on a monthly basis. Um, or you can make a one-time donation as well on that same website. Um, I also have uh, various stand-up comedy albums. I have about six comedy albums out right now uh, that are available on my website at krishmohanhaha.com. And most of them, if you get them off of Bandcamp, are available for a dollar or a, a pay-what-you-want pricing. And I also want to mention that I do have an online merch store. Uh, you can go to my website, krishmohanhaha.com, click on the merch tab, and check out all of the designs that I've made myself. And the Julian Assange shirt, there is a Julian Assange shirt that's on the website. All the profit from the Julian Assange designs will be going to uh, pro-Assange activists such as Action for Assange, uh, Kevin Gastola, Richard Methurst, folks uh, 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 that, that are covering and talking about Assange. So I'm going to be making donations to them. Um, uh, it'll be 100% of the profits I make off of that shirt. Uh, thank you again for tuning in. Thank you again to all the people that have made contributions to the show, that regularly check out my content, that have subscribed to my channels. I, I very, very much appreciate it, and uh, and you guys help keep this uh, keep keep this this train a moving. So I, I very much appreciate that. Until the next video, we'll see you on the road. See you guys.